I have been born. Several months later. Sir, I'm I'm very sorry you've developed a form of cancer called glibostoma. It's so fast and is almost untreatable if not recognized early. I'd say you'd only have a few months to live. But but how could this have happened? Isn't there a way we can locate diseases when they start to form? Not this time, Cancer. Today, biosensors are here. That's funny. You think biosensors can stop me? You do know most types of cancers are treatable if found early on. I mean, biosensors can help us do that. With the, when there's a change in electrons, they can send us messages signaling and giving us symptoms that may lead us to figure out that you have cancer so we can stop you before you start growing all over the place. You know, I'm going to do that right now. No! Nanosensors, biosensors, you have to give me a chance to repay you. Teach me more about what you are. Well, to understand who we are, you must first understand our father, nanotechnology. I am the father. Nanotechnology is the study and use of structures that can be measured using the nano scale, ranging from one nanometer to a hundred nanometers. What the length of one human hair is about 80,000 nanometers. So you mean like that big maybe? No, it's the width of a human hair. We are so small. So there's three main types of nanosensors. They all have a carbon nanotube and electrons on either side. The first type is a physical sensor which relies on the outside world to actually move its nanotube, causing the change in electrons. The sensor will then pick up on that change of electrons and transmit the data to the user. The second type of nanosensors are chemical sensors. The change of electrons occurs when the chemical center interacts with different types of chemicals. Any change in electrons can send signals to the user. Another type of nanosensors are biosensors. The change of electron occurs when antibodies lock onto antigens. Nanosensors are kind of able to sense the future, transmitting data, and mainly working with the change of electricity. We can help industries such as food, ensuring that food when bought is not actually rotten. We can even help industries such as agriculture, ensuring that crops are growing the right way. And lastly, healthcare with diabetes patients and even cancer patients. Okay, that's neat and all, but how do you actually build something smaller than the diameter of a human hair? The process of building nanostructures is called nanofabrication. And there are two main ways nanostructures are created. The first way is the top-down method, where you usually start with a big material and slowly break it, break it down, etching at it, at, printing at it, and putting patterns on it. Think about it like an ice sculpture. The second way is the bottom-top method, where you start with nothing and slowly place atoms together using complex patterns to form your nanostructures. They are really quite the opposites. One starting with a big material, and one starting with nothing, slowly building yourself to nanostructures. Self-assembly is another way nanostructures can be built, but are usually classified from the bottom-up method, since there are atoms created that can create and form nanostructures. Nanosensors sound too good to be true. What's really the catch? I blame it all on my brother, nanofabrication. He has so many problems with him and the process of building me and other nanostructures. For example, with the top-down method, you waste a lot of materials since you're only using such a small amount of structures. And it costs a lot of money to do so. New machine machinery is constantly needed because nanotechnology is constantly developing. And the second way 
the bottom up method is very tedious. You're starting from scratch and having to design something with very complex patterns. If the nano fabrication process is so hard, why do you use such small materials in the first place? You see, sometimes smaller can be better. For example, take your pencil. On the tip of it is graphite, what you write with. And if you scratch that down to a nanometer, you get graphene, a substance that's even stronger than steel. Not only that, it's very absorbent, so it can be used to clean up oil spills and other pollutants. Secondly, because they're very small, they can get into small areas, like your bloodstream, to help you with cancer. How are you going to combat the problem with nanofabrication? Well, one thing we've looked at doing is improving the self-assembly process by trying to put the atoms in different environments. Maybe it's a different temperature or different magnetic field. It could possibly speed up the process. So I hope you learned something about my family today and nanotechnology.